Miss Angela from the website naturallivingalchemy.ca. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a simple tutorial how you can take all of these simple ingredients and turn it into, into this beautiful, light, and fluffy whipped body butter. So join me and I'm going to show you how you can make your own. Let's talk a little bit about some of the ingredients that we're using and then I'm going to show you how to whip it all together. So the first thing that I want to talk about that you're going to need for this whipped body butter is tallow balm. Now I have a video showing you how to make tallow balm. Um, so I'm going to point you to that one. But basically it is a mixture of a rendered grass fed beef fat. This is actually one that I've rendered myself. And I do have plans on showing you how to do it and how you can render your own. I'm just waiting for the farm that I order from to have more suet so that I can render it down for you. So to that, we are going to mix an olive oil, okay? And because we like to infuse things around here, our particular olive oil was infused with chamomile, horsetail, and lavender. Now, of course, you can customize it however you want, but these are just the plant allies that I chose. And I'm gonna share why with you in just a moment. So some other things that we're gonna need, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the ingredients and why I chose them, is shea butter. And specifically, we are looking for raw, unrefined shea butter. We also are going to have an option to use arrowroot powder. I'll explain why in a moment. Now let's talk a little bit about the primary actions of concern of the plants that I chose, and you're gonna understand why I chose them. So the first one I wanna talk about is chamomile. So the primary actions that we are going to be concerned with with chamomile is it works as a spasmolytic, which means it can help reduce tension and spasm. It is infl inflammation modulating, which means it just has the ability to not shut down the inflammation signal that your body is sending out, but rather modulate it, rather see what it can do to kind of help alter and get your body back into a state of homeostasis. Other actions of chamomile include it is an antifungal, it is antimicrobial, and this is because of its essential oil content, and it's also Vulnerary, which means it helps wounds heal more rapidly and it can prevent bacterial overgrowth and infection. So areas of your body that chamomile really likes to go to would be your smooth muscles, your nervous system, and the skin. And it can actually help with chronic skin conditions like eczema or acne. However, keeping in mind, although it may help and provide you some relief, it is not going to get down to the root cause as to why you have eczema or acne in the first place. But it can definitely help out with your symptoms. And energetically, chamomile is cooling and it is a relaxant. It is ruled by the planet Venus. It is ruled by the element of the air. And it is ruled by the principle of sulfur. Now, just for a quick recap on what I'm talking about when I say the ruling planet, ruling element, and ruling principle, I'm going to send you to the video that I did on the Western Alchemical Map of Creation, and it just does a better job of explaining what that is, but it is actually really important to me that I share with you what those are. What are the rulers of the planet that we are so familiar with, yet really don't know that much about still? So the next herb that I want to talk about is lavender and i don't know lavender always just makes me think of aromatherapy and like a relaxation bath but that is not all that lavender can give us it also works as a spasmolytic and has inflammation modulating properties it also works as a circulatory diffusive so it has affinities for the skin for the nervous system and for the musculoskeletal system, as well as your cardiovascular system. So another thing that it can do, and an, another affinity that it has, is for the remit female reproductive system, aka it can help us with cramps. Energetically, 
Lavender is cooling when applied topically. It's a relaxant, it's drying, and it's diffusive. Diffusive just means it breaks up stagnant energy and has the ability to move it through your body. And being a circulatory diffusive, that's how it's doing it. It's moving through your circulation system. The ruling planet of lavender is Mercury. The ruling element is air. And the ruling principle is sulfur. And finally, the last herb that I would like to touch on is horsetails. Horsetails have the primary action that we are concerned with of being astringent. It means it's going to pucker and tighten and tone up those tissues. It works as an alterative, which is another way to say a blood purifier. It also has inflammation modulating properties, and it is a nutritive tonic. And this is because it is silica rich, meaning it is containing a mixture of silicon and oxygen. And silicon is said to be key to the synthesis of collagen. And that is one of the key building blocks of the skin. And it is essential to the strength and the elasticity of the skin. Horsetails has an affinity for the musculoskeletal system, as well as the nervous system. Energetically, it is cooling, tonifying, and drying. I could also say it has an affinity for the skin, which is why I am including it in a skincare product. You know, the ruling planet of horse tail is Saturn, the ruling element is water, and the ruling principle, salt. So one more thing to mention, because we are going to be using plants, you want to make sure that you don't have an allergy to them, or that the person that you're potentially giving this finished product to also does not have an allergy to them. We are in the business of helping people feel well and feeling better. The last thing that we want to do is cause an allergic reaction. Now, let's talk about shea butter and specifically unrefined or unprocessed shea butter. Because once you process it, it starts to lose some of its essential nutrients in that processing. Okay? But raw shea butter is packed with vitamins and nutrients that your skin just loves to drink up. And it is also the fat that is extracted from the nut of the shea tree. So although technically it is a tree nut, it's really, really low in the proteins that trigger an allergic reaction to tree nuts. Because allergen, allergens are made up of proteins and shea butter is made up entirely of fat. And there have actually been no known reports of any allergies that have ever been reported from just using shea butter. So some other things about shea butter that are beneficial is that high concentration of vitamins and fatty acids. It's also non-comedonogenic, which means it is not going to clog your pores, okay? And it also contains, much like tallow, laolinic acid, oleic acid, stearic acid, and palmitic acid. And all of those have moisturizing effects on your skin. Another thing that's really, really neat about shea butter though, is it has a natural SPF factor of three or four. So definitely something to look into when, I think I'm gonna make a sunscreen recipe and I'm definitely gonna include shea butter in that for all well, the summer months around here. So finally, due to its healing and hydrating qualities, it actually has the ability to help reduce scars and stretch marks. I'd like to remind you of just one thing. I'm not a doctor. None of what is on this channel is medical advice. And always be sure to consult your health care practitioner before following my advice. So, sorry, I just have to do that for the platform we are watching this on. So, the last ingredient I would like to talk about, and it's an optional one, but it's arrowroot powder. Now, sometimes body butters can feel greasy and adding something like an arrowroot powder helps combat that greasiness. However, now this is something that I found to be very, very, very interesting about when your skin does not absorb body butters or lotions. So if you find when you put them on that your skin remains greasy for a while, 
that is actually a signal that your body is telling you and it is letting you know you're actually dehydrated in oils. So if you are finding that, you would maybe want to include the body butter and put it on your skin, but you would also want to increase your intake of healthy oils, okay? I can talk more about that in a different video, but just know if your skin just drinks up the body butter or the lotion, that you're in a state of good hydration. If it remains on your skin, you're not, okay? So I just like to add a little bit of arrowroot powder. I will show you how much and when to add it in just a moment. So that is all of the ingredients that I wanna talk about with you. So let's put this together. So to put this whipped body butter together, first we're going to start with our double boiler, okay? So just grab a pot, put some water in it. I have this handy little melting pot. There will be links down below in the description box for you to check out before I forget to tell you. And in that, you're also gonna find a full written blog article that accompanies this video that has a recipe card on it and also some links as to where you can grab some of these products for yourself and you can start making them on your own. So anyway, last week in the tallow balm video, we had just poured our tallow balm just in a glass mason jar, okay? So all you wanna do to heat it back up is just put a, a clean um, dishcloth in the bottom of the pot, fill it with water, and then just put it on the stove and bring it up to like, it doesn't even need to be boiling, just kind of like a nice, just a nice hot water will melt all of this balm and then you can easily measure and pour it out. All right, so all you're gonna do is you're going to measure out half a cup of tallow balm. And to that, you're going to mix in a quarter cup of your shea butter. Well, I just like to stir mine with these little um, wooden popsicle sticks. I find that they're, well, they're, they're affordable, they're cheap, um, and then you can just throw them out when you're done. But feel free to use whatever it is that you are wanting to use. I've been thinking of maybe getting some glass ones just so that they are more sustainable, but um, maybe we'll have some next time. So you just want to keep stirring this and incorporating it until everything melts. And then I'll just show you what to do after that. Yeah. Now, of course, if you wanted to make this whipped body butter just from a non-infused oil, you could. You could, um, you could just use the straight tallow and then add an oil into it at this point. So it's really, it's whatever you have, it's whatever way you wanna do it, but really the options are limitless. So once everything is just nice, incorporated and melted together, you will we'll turn off our stove and we're just going to take our melted oil and we're just gonna pour it into a metal bowl. Now we do want to try to make sure to not really get any water in here if possible. If you do, like I kind of just drips them in, we just wipe it out. So now you are going to want to take this bowl and we're going to put it in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes and I'll show you what we're looking for. All right, so it's actually been about 20, closer to 25 minutes. We have our indent, as you can see, this is what we're looking for. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your mixer and we are going to start to whip this up. And we're gonna pause every so often just to scrape the sides down. But as you're gonna see, 
this is going to turn from this kind of yellowish color into a nice fluffy white body butter. And then once we whip it, I will show you what we can add next. Okay, now, because we are nicely mixed up, as you can see, so you have a couple options on what you are going to do next. Now, just because I don't like essential oils and I prefer things to be unscented, that doesn't mean you're the same. So this would be the point where you would want to add the proper dilution rate of essential oils. So make sure that if you are using essential oils, you are consulting the manufacturer's directions as to what the dilution rate should be. Since I'm skipping those, I have nothing to put in. But what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add one half of a teaspoon of the arrowroot powder. We're gonna put it in here and we're going to whip it up again. Okay, so once we're whipped, we're good. Our arrow root is now incorporated. Um, now, if you did wanna use more than the half a teaspoon, by all means, go. feel free to do so. I just find that the half a teaspoon is just nice enough to take kind of that, that greasiness factor away that can sometimes happen without, well, making it too dry. So next, all you're gonna do is just put it in some storage jars. So I found these curly cute little ones actually at um, my Dollarama. So feel free to check places like that. I will have some links below so you can find some small jars too. I just like to sometimes just take like a second spatula and just and make sure that it's all in like that. And then that's all. That's all you do. Put your lid on and make sure you have your handy label. It has the date, it has what it is, and the ingredients in it. Another way that you could fill these jars if you wanted, instead of just kind of placing them in here, is you could actually put your whipped lotion or body butter into like um, either a, um, oh my gosh, what is the word? If you're decorating a cake, you would use like a pastry, like a piping bag. You can use that to put this in the jars. You can also just use a plastic bag that you filled with the lotion and then just cut the tip off of and you can make a uh, pastry bag that way too. But however it is that you wanna put in, I kind of like playing around with it and doing it this way, but by, by all means, it is whatever you prefer. That is it. That is how simple it is to make your own whipped tallow body butter. Comment down below and let me know when are you going to make your own whipped tallow body butter and what ingredients and what different plant allies are you going to put in yours? So don't forget to like this video and share it with anybody who you think might benefit or enjoy learning how to make their own whipped tallow body butter. And consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss future videos of different things that I plan on bringing you in the future. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with you a really, really one of my favorite digestive bitter formulas. 
to help with digestive health. So make sure you come back for that one. And until next time, thank you for spending this time with me and may you find peace wherever you are. Thank you.